Okay guys, living in the future in Australia is pretty cool for many reasons, okay? Reason one, uh, nothing really apart from playing Final Fantasy early, okay? But living in Australia is meaning that you live before the Americans. That means we get the game early, and we get to play Final Fantasy early, and I'm happy for that, people. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we uh, did get Final Fantasy VII early. Uh, I have finished it, Sam has nearly finished it. Uh, we're gonna do our review now. Let's go. After the drop. So, first things first, uh, anyone that's played Final Fantasy VII, the original one, which I'm guessing a lot of people have. A lot of nerds out very, there. Uh, there's one or two, right? A lot of people are gonna realize that this is very different from the original. Very, very different. Now, you've seen the trailers, you've seen uh, the fighting mechanics, but another thing that you're also gonna realize from this is the actual story that's being told is also very different the way that they deliver it. There's a lot of things here. There's also the materia system, the, the GF system, uh, there's, uh, there's additional uh, ways that you can kind of uh, change your weapon. There's just a lot of stuff here. I agree that it is different. I, I would say though that I'm also struck by a lot of the similarities and how faithful they have been to the original in many regards, right? Not all regards as the ending will demonstrate and there's gonna be a lot of discussion about that ending and a lot of fans are not gonna be happy with it. A lot of fans are really gonna hate it in fact, which we won't spoil it here. But, uh, but I do feel as though the rest of the game really carried a lot of the heart and soul that the original Final Fantasy VII had in the locations, in the yep. character moments, um, in the personalities of each individual character, uh, the feel of the city. Just, just I really just felt like it was quite an authentic Final Fantasy VII experience, despite it being completely new. Do you know what I mean? I, I agree with that. I definitely feel, I, I definitely got Resident Evil 2 vibes in terms of like, they really, you know, they, they had a little bit of uh, creative license, but there was definitely still, the crux of it was still very Final Fantasy. But even more than Res 2, this really felt like they went to the next level of like completely shaking this up. But at the core of it, I did feel like I was playing Final Fantasy 7, but just from the future. You know, like I felt like this wasn't just like, let's just put uh, a, a new coat of paint on this thing. That's from the ground up, make sure it feels like Final Fantasy, but make sure it feels like 2020 Final Fantasy. Yeah, yeah, you know, totally, And I totally. think that they've done an absolutely fantastic job. I find I it know. very hard to think that anyone is going to have a real issue with a lot of this stuff in this game, but let's just start well, with the battle system. What do you think? Yeah, well, I think the combat is, I think, objectively fantastic. Um, oh, there are so a lot of, there are there are some problems with it, okay? Don't get me wrong, it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. But uh, I am just con I, I just never ever got tired of combat. I think it is such an innovative, fresh take on turn based combat. Because it is turn based. Mm -hmm. Like you 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 your basic attacks do very little and then when you pause gameplay to issue commands, that's where the real damage happens. Yep. Um, yep. And it's just it's a really great spectacle driven uh, but deep combat system that I just always, always enjoyed. Some of the boss battles were just incredible. Like, oh man, mm. I mean, uh, you the phases that it sense. went through. But yeah, some of the phases of the bosses and just, there are so many bosses in this game, by the way, and almost all of them are fantastic. Some of them are a bit long, but um, but they even then they don't feel long. Yeah. yeah even then they don't feel drawn out to me because again I'm just enjoying combat so much I really don't mind just going through the motions with combat you know yeah um, and also like the cinematics between it like it always feels like every moment yeah. is getting higher and higher but yeah. um, I do feel like it had a Kingdom Hearts vibe to it in terms of like there was definitely a fluidity to it a funness sure. to it and I do think a lot of people when they initially would have looked at the trailer like I did when I saw the original trailer, I don't know, a year or two ago now, whatever it is, showing what the battle system was going to be like. I was like, what the hell is this? This isn't Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. But now playing this, I'm like, this is exactly what it needed. It did For not sure. need to have a stale turn by turn, a, a turn based system. It yeah. needed to be revitalized, you know, and that's but, just the yeah. one, one of the things that they revitalized. There are some issues though, like camera during combat is a big problem, uh, particularly because- I didn't have an issue with that. No, I had lots of problems. Camera really? just had a life of its own. Yeah, and, and a lot of the time, like if you're fixated on an enemy, you can't really see the enemies around you. And if they're, and they're targeting you because you're, control, you're controlling the character, and if they're using abilities, you can't see that they're using those abilities. Like clarity during combat is a big problem in terms of mm. understanding what's going on around you at any point in time. Also being interrupted is such a pain in the ass. Oh, like, with the sleep and the, no, and the no, electricity? No, not just sleep, but like, it's very possible for enemies to just interrupt you all the time just by hitting you after you've cast an ability. 
and mm. um, and that is super annoying when you've saved up like two ATB bars to do that. There's also an issue with AI where the um, AI companions that you're not controlling are pretty stupid, and you really they need don't to, do like, anything. They, they don't do, do anything. Things. They do things, no, but they, like, don't they do just punch enough. away. They they punch away, but yeah. ultimately you always have to then press your R2 to actually make them do Correct. To, to deal any damage. I was looking in the actual um, in the menu to maybe give me uh, give them a bit more kind of. Yeah, yeah, intelligence. Uh, intelligence, be less stupid. right? Yeah. yeah, be less stupid. But I, I think that ultimately that was obviously a creative decision to make sure that we didn't just play cloud the whole time. Why? Yeah. While Tiffa uses her magic, and then you know, I, I so I kind of get Tiffa what uses her that. magic, guys. Just, just be yes. aware of that. Let's that's make that's, sure you that's do what that. we. Yes, Tiffa's a big Tifa. magic mm -hmm. user. She's famous for <laughs> her magic. Well, let's actually move to the that. I think it's a good segue because I do feel as though. Um, the characters are what really make this game, you know. As much as I enjoyed combat, I really just enjoyed hanging out with the gang. Uh, yeah. I feel like they totally nailed this part of the game. Now, obviously, this game is set in Midgar. Uh, it's only there, which means that they've kind of had to build in some padding into this game. Part of that padding is not so great, which we'll talk about soon. Part of the padding is really good, and it's the extra moments you get to spend with the characters. And it really kind of just... It deepens your connection to them. Like, I just mm. loved every chance that I had to sit down with a character and talk to them. I loved every cutscene. I love the waifu selection mini game that you're essentially playing throughout it as you're yes. like, as you're in the, the, the open world sections, all that stuff. You're like, which one will I choose, guys? It's yes. the ultimate choice. Sophie's choice. Um, so, look, I, I just loved all that. And I think that that component of the game, they really, really nailed it. It definitely felt great to have all those beautiful ladies wanting to just have you. And I'm like, well, this is a change. <laughs> you know, this is a change. Yeah, right. I like this game. All right. I'm going to play more of this game. No, but um, firstly, it did still feel very true to the source material. It wasn't like, let's just throw some heaps of stuff in that just kind of gives you too much of a new take that it's too detached. Like, it mm. still felt like Barrett. It still felt like Aerith oh, totally. and, or Eris yeah. or Tifa or whatever, you know? Um, but you, you, there was a lot more time there to actually get get to know those characters. Yeah. Um, and, you know, when the headlights came out saying that you weren't be able, you weren't going to be able to play Red 13, I'm like, oh my god, what the hell? You know, but there's just so much here you can understand why there's so much time that you spend with these characters and so much unpacking there's going to be more than enough time in the next disc or the next installment to have some more time with the future characters but yeah. these characters in here uh it just it was so perfect for me the cinematic storytelling it felt very well paced for me i really for sure, liked it for sure. and i felt like cloud was also like you know the grumpy asshole that he yeah, kind yeah. of always is yeah. uh, and they did it also perfectly so so in, that, in that regard, yeah. yeah, in that regard, I think a lot of people are going to be very happy with the story and how they deliver that story. Yeah. So I guess I guess this is probably a good chance to talk about the padding in the game, uh, which mm -hmm. is I feel like there's a fair amount of padding here. There's essentially three or four open world chapters where you're yep. dropped into a part of Midgar, and in those sections you're able to do side quests. Now, the side quests are pretty nuff nuff. They're nothing special. Uh, they're like, go and find the cats. Uh, go and kill the local gang dudes who are causing yeah. problems. Like, go really in the factory and kill some monsters and shit. Yeah. Really yeah. generic stuff. Uh, look, it's not a big deal because the total amount of side content is only about five or six hours. The game, by the way, is 35 hours long. I played it on normal difficulty. I did every single side quest. It took me 35 mm. hours to finish it. I'm going to tell you Still right now. Still a sizable game. Still a I mean, sizable yeah, game. A lot, a lot of people are going to be pissed off that it's not 60 hours. I get it. I mean, I understand all that, that mm. sort of stuff. My point is that it is what it is. Built into the rest of the game, though, like the core missions, some of the missions just drag on too long, man. And like... You know, they're just they're just they're just sort of taking the piss at times, and and you're really mm. feeling like, come on, man, this this could have been a lot faster. We could have we don't need this extra section. Uh, there's one section where you literally just go back to where you have been before, and you kill a boss that you have already killed. Um, there is definitely like you could have delivered this whole package in a very lean 20 hours, okay, mm. and it would have been perfect. But then the extra 15 hours on top of it, it's there. Some of it's optional, some of it's compulsory, and it really doesn't help the game, you know? Mm. Having said that, I still enjoyed it in this, in this because I love Final Fantasy. I love Final Fantasy VII. I love the characters. I love the combat. Yeah. But I was very much like you could absolutely have chopped this and you would have lost nothing. I want, yeah, I wonder if that we're just, I mean, I, I'm definitely a, a big fanboy of FF7. It's probably like, it's it's my favorite Final Fantasy, along with the many other people love FF7 the most. Like, and uh, I just, I found it hard to find a lot of fault with this personally, because I just, 
I don't know. I can even even the even the additional stuff, even if they were kind of a bit boring and bland, I just felt like they were a nice little addition on the side. In that regard, I didn't I didn't mind the padding. That's what I'm trying to say. I didn't mind sure. the extra padding because you could uh, yeah. still go ahead with, with with the with the normal story at the same time. You could do a little bit more on the side, and you can get a nice little weapon or or a, a bit of material or whatever. Sure. Um, you it, know, it didn't, and, it didn't yeah. feel egregious. It didn't feel like they were taking the piss. Because some games really force you into that like side Like Assassin's Creed or something. Assassin's exactly. Creed, honestly, Assassin's something. Creed, and you're like, come on, man, fuck off with this, you know? It doesn't, it doesn't feel like that. But as I said, mm. it doesn't really add a lot either. And I think yep. the people who are frustrated that this game has been chopped up into multiple components as opposed to one singular game, they're going to say, well, you know, the reason that this boring content exists is to pad it out so they could sell us three games instead of one. Which I think is a is a fair point. I think it's a fair point, you know? Yeah, I, I definitely think that if we were sitting here... Okay, the amount of time, cutscenes, uh, world build, like this, the uh, realized world, like there's so much time and effort into this. For yeah. them to try and do all three installments with that amount of effort, tender love and care, it would have it, it's just such a gigantic job. I don't think that they would have able, they would have been able yeah. to fully deliver this. I agree with And that. release it now. That. Do you know what I mean? I like there is yeah. so much here. I remember calling you when I was about five hours in. I'm like, it, you know, does it keep this pace? And you said it pretty much does. And it has, you know, so it is, there is so much much here I think I kind of feel like it is justified for them to do it, at least an extra installment maybe not three but there's so much uh, so much time and cinematics and and there's so much to sink your teeth into in this I definitely am um, I, I definitely feel like the price tag is roughly where I think it should be for this oh, current I think so installment. too and as I said I'm not going to tell anyone what they should think about Final Fantasy 7 or the remake mm. or whatever everyone's got their own perspective on that fine my personal perspective alone is that I played this game for 35 hours I was so moved by some of it you know because mm. of the tenderness of some moments and also because of the hype and heroism of some moments obviously that is hugely um, enhanced by my nostalgia goggles but mm. I really felt some pretty big feels, you know? Like Marlene. I, how cute is Marlene, for God's yeah, sake? Yeah, like, yeah. How can you um, not like Marlene? That's the cutest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. Yes, of course. I mean, there's there's lots of characters that just sort of fall into that adorable car uh, mm. category. Uh, Wall Market, I think, is such a standout highlight of this oh, game as definitely. well. Definitely. Just... Ju I, I mean, I won't spoil any of it, but just so... It was like... It was like Yakuza... Um, kind of like just just craziness going on there mm. and just awesomeness. Mm. So look, overall, um, I loved this game. I think they absolutely nailed it. It's going to be divisive. A lot of people are going to hate it. They're going to hate the ending. Uh, a lot of the hardcore fandom already do because they've seen the spoilers. Um, Again, I like the ending. I think it's interesting. I think it opens up some interesting possibilities for the future of this game and this franchise. Uh, I'm, I, I appreciated it, but I understand that a lot of people won't. Um, yeah, all I can say is I feel like Square nailed it. That's my personal view. I definitely feel like Square nailed it. I think that they could have easily gone out and just slapped some nice graphics on this, given the exact same story, and everyone would have been happy. Let's be real. Everyone, everyone would have been sure. like, you know, cool, thanks, thanks, Square. We now can play this with, you know, some nice graphics and maybe a few cheats, just like Final Fantasy VIII and IX have done, right? The original Final Fantasy VII, I think, was like the ocarina of time for JRPGs, for a lot of people at least. So again, for them to go back to the drawing board and try and reimagine this is is a tough task. I really yeah. feel like they've actually done it. I really I feel, feel like, they like they've actually done something that uh, is go it, it has made it better than the original one, which is a very t tough thing to do, you know? So I think a lot of people are going to like this. I'm looking forward to seeing what the Metacritic score is. I'm thinking it's easy going to be in the 90s, in my opinion, uh, but we will see. We will see. But uh, that is it for today, everybody. And uh, heaps of news coming in right now, guys. Do -do 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 -do. Heaps <laughs> of news coming in in the gaming world, okay? So we'll be back tomorrow with some more news. Ralph, do you want to say anything before we say Lemon Out? Layman out. Layman out!